Hi everyone, this is Mary Ann Talamo again. And I was discussing in a prior video about cheating a little bit in Painter and making a, an ink painting with certain brushes and how you have to make sure you strategically stack your layers in order to do a pen and ink technique. And I had a light bulb moment thinking about how to do it in Photoshop. And so that is coming quickly, but I thought this would be a good way to introduce a new video to the channel, how brushes work in Photoshop. So I know how brushes work in Painter. I've known they pretty much haven't changed. But how brushes work in Photoshop is much, much different. If you look here at your general brushes, you get a soft round, you get a hard round, a soft pressure and size. So I'm going to show you the difference. I'm going to take the soft round. I'm going to make it black and I'm going to draw a line. And I hope my, I highlighted my cursor because sometimes when you're using, now this document, I want you to look down here. This document is 22 by 20 inches at 300 PPI. And you may, and it's only at 12% this piece of paper. This is why we have the navigator open. We can quickly put it up to 16%, 25%, and you'll see how big the actual piece of paper is it's the whole canvas and you may be asking yourself well why is she using such a big piece of paper and here's the thing brushes in photoshop if you want to get down to a one point brush and i'm going to do that i'm going to cycle my brush with my tablet if i go down to one point that is the thinnest line i'm going to get at one point the thinnest softest line so if i have more dots per inch PPI, more points per inch, I guess you should say, then my brush will look like that. If I get, and if so, yeah, I could go smaller. I could go smaller here. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Okay. So that's why you want to use a big document because then you can get the most out of a brush. If you smart on a small document, a small resolution document, these brushes are not going to work the same. I think you should use at least a document that is 20 by 24, maybe 16 by 20. I don't know if you could successfully paint on an image smaller than that. So now well, let's go into the hard round. See, so it's not, a, it's so here, unlike painter, the brush tool is just the brush tool. You don't change brushes. You just use the brush and you change the drop down settings. So the hard round, what does the hard round look like? Okay. So the hard round, I'm going to make it big enough to make a big line. That is the hard round. Okay. Now, why is it not black? Why is it not completely black, the hard round? Well, that's because I have my opacity at 75%. If I put that to 100, if I put my flow to 100, I should get a black line. Now, before I draw it, if I don't get a black line, what do you get? But I think you're going to get a black line. Let's see. Ah, yeah, there you go. So now we went from gray to black with the same brush just by changing the opacity and the flow. But I like to keep mine because I work on a tablet. I kind of keep mine always at 75%. And then if I need black blacks or white whites, then I'll change it all the way up. But so what I'll do instead is probably take this, uh, if I want a softer brush and I want it to depend on the pressure of my hand, then I will pick a soft round pressure size, meaning pressure of my hand on the tablet will determine the size of the brush. So even if I have, if the, and then probably go to the biggest, press down, you see how you get that tapered edge that is a little bit different? The, um, let's find that other soft round that I drew on this. Oh, maybe that is it. Okay, I made a mistake. What do I get? What do you guys get when I make a mistake? <laughs> but the so I'll make it bigger to show you. So it depends on your hand pressure. And you see that little skinny point that comes to the end? You can't get that with the regular soft round. You can't get that little point. Ah, see, yeah, it was right there. Oh, oh Marianne, bad Marianne. So right here, you see the point, the difference between a little pinpoint and, a, and not. Okay, so then what if we keep up with this soft round brush? And we go to soft round pressure opacity. Well, pressure opacity means the brush will say whatever size you pick it. And I have it right here, 250. And the opacity depends on how hard I press on the tablet. 
Not my not my favorite setting, honestly. I do like I tend to use more soft round opacity and flow. You see how soft that brush is now? So I get a little bit of both and I'm going to go to a clean piece of the paper. So you see here Look how light I can make it, or how dark and big I can make it, or how light and soft I can make it. That's because I have soft round pressure, opacity, and flow. And the same thing for the hard round. It'll go in and out, in and out of opacity, in and out. Depend. I'm lifting my tablet. I'm lifting, I'm lifting my tablet. I'm lifting my pen off my tablet. You can see it's making all these soft round shapes. And if I press harder like this and I grind my pen, look at that. I can get, and then you start, you can start layering it. See, that's the thing. If you have full, let's say you have full opacity at a hundred percent and full flow at a hundred percent. Well, I'm just going to get a bunch of black there, no matter what brush. Well, no, if I use the pressure, I'm going to clean my piece of paper. Let's get a new. Okay. Here I have a new piece of paper. Here I have a new piece of paper. I do not want to save the changes on my scribble paper. No. Here I have the opacity in 100%, the flow in 100%, and the brush is the hard round opacity and flow. So if I have it at 100%, I am controlling both the opacity and the flow depending on how hard I press on my tablet. And then you could start getting this overlapping color that you see here. And then it starts to make it look more, more like paint. And then if you start pressing really hard on the pen and, but you see there's still a, there's still a gradient right here with this brush, as opposed to going all the way to the hard round at a hundred percent. No, no opacity, no drop off, strictly 100% black. And the same thing for white, strictly 100% white use it as an eraser too. <laughs> That's a little touch on how the general paintbrush works. And I was thinking, well, why couldn't I do the ink on a layer in Photoshop? And I'm going to show you that now. And I'm just going to scribble. I don't, well, maybe I should get an image out and do it on that. Hold on. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. This is not a bait and switch to get you to watch the end of the video. But if you have, I'm sorry. I did do a pen and ink style on this image and I thought I recorded it and uh, apparently I didn't <laughs> when I went to go look for the rest of the video. But I promised to redo it on this image and show you what I did and that will be coming in a future video. So I have more videos coming down the pipe about Photoshop, Capture One, Painter, and then also leaning into some hand-drawn methods. I'm developing a video for you guys to teach you some hand drawing as well, as well as drawing over your photographs. So if you like the content, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like, please subscribe, and I'll see you shortly. Take care. Bye.